Hey guys, welcome back to Floating Head Technology. It is a pleasure to be with you today, and today we are going to talk about RL series circuits. And before we get started, I'd like to just kind of talk a little bit about the point of RL series circuits and how they relate to what you've already learned in class. Okay, so these, in a lot of ways, are the exact opposite of RC series circuits. Okay, and if you remember from RC series circuits a number of weeks ago, that they were always done in vector four. Okay, so all of the phase angles had a negative, uh, they were all negative. Okay, where in an RL uh, series circuit, they're all going to be, because of the opposite, in vector one, and they will all be, have a positive phase angle. Okay. And so a lot of times when we start to think about, oh no, what's the formula? Well, if you remember things from the RC series circuits, you can think, well, maybe it's probably, there might, there's a good chance it's the opposite in an RL series circuit, okay? And so that's just a little hint and trick for you, if you will, okay? Um, and so let's go ahead and we are going to go ahead and start off with a review, okay? Just a quick review of what we did last week. I know this online learning stuff can be a little uh, a little intimidating, and so I know you have a lot you're attempting to retain on your own. So let's do a quick review here, all right? So inductors in a perfect circuit, in an ideal circuit, do not have resistance, okay? they have reactance to an AC signal. There is a little bit of resistance there in the windings uh, that we talked about, which affects the Q factor. But for our math today, we are going to assume that they do not have any resistance, okay? At least winding resistance. We're gonna use uh, all the resistance from the resistors, all right? So uh, they do have reactance to an AC signal, which is really important. And based on this, uh, it is based on, okay, a couple of things, the frequency and the actual, uh, the inductance of the inductor, which is made up of how it is physically created, okay? How many windings, how far apart they are, is there a core, is there not a core? All of those things make up the number of Henry's it is rated in, okay? Or the inductance of it, okay? Now, the formula, and I'm sure you recall from our lab and our lecture last week, the formula for this is going to be uh, 2 pi FL, all right, 2 pi FL. So let's go ahead, if you don't already, um, go ahead and get out your sheet all right, that we've been working on for a while where we write down all the formulas, okay? So I think this would be uh, in the next box that you have cleared out. And we are gonna go ahead and we're going to write down in that box, okay, where we're tracking all of the numbers. We're gonna write RL series circuits and that could not be worse so i'm going to try to redo that real quick let me see here all right rl series okay it looks like a kid's writing this sorry my stylist is not the best so from here this is where we're going to put all of our formulas and the first one we're going to write down here is x of l equals 2 pi FL, all right? And so this is the first formula that we're going to have to remember when we start making a bunch of calculations here in a little bit, okay? So write that on your piece of paper for yourself, and uh, we will uh, be coming back to this quite often, okay? So let's go ahead and do this first formula here. So what is the inductive reactance of a uh, 250 millihenry inductor that has the frequency running through it of 7,500 7, hertz? Let's pull up our calculator, bring this over to here. So this is going to be 2 times pi times point. 2, 5, because this is 250 millihenries, 
okay? Um, and then multiply that by 7,500. And we are at a frequent, we are at a value here of 11,781 ohms. Okay, and remember, inductive reactance is a value that come that is in ohms. Okay, that is our resistance, if you will, or what we refer to as our inductive reactance. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get back to the PowerPoint here. Okay, so um, now in a resistive circuit, current and voltage are perfectly in phase with each other. Okay, um, in an inductive circuit, they are 90 degrees out of phase with each other. All right. Okay. So where our voltage, our, um, our current and our voltage are going to be perfectly 90 degrees out of phase. All right. And so that's going to be really important to remember because when we have a resistor and an inductor, we are going to have to be concerned with what, how out of phase are my voltage and current? Okay. Because in a purely inductive circuit, we know they're 90 degrees. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, keep going and then we'll be discussing what that phase angle is and all the different ways to calculate it out and the effects that it can have on circuit. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, our objectives for this lecture are to compare and to con contrast series resistive inductive and resistive inductive RL circuits. We want to compare and contrast apparent power, uh, reactive power, resistive and true power, we want to describe voltage and phase characteristics of a series RL circuit. We want to describe the impedance and current characteristics of a series RL circuit. We want to calculate the impedance, voltage, and current values in any R series RL circuits. We want to perform all the rele uh, relevant power calculations for an RL series circuit. And describe the concept of power factor, okay, which we've already done in another thing, but we'll revisit that here. Okay, and calculate the power factor in an RL circuit. Okay, uh, so characteristics of a series RL circuit are the same for any series circuits. And my students will know that in a series circuit, current is the current is the current. Okay, and so getting that current, however you get it, and there's a couple of ways to get it, is going to be a key to understanding the mathematics behind a RL series circuit. Okay, this is going to be really, really important. So the quicker we can get to our current total, the better. And there's a couple ways to do that. Mathematically, when we're dealing with a circuit on paper, and how we do it in lab, where we're actually we have we cannot directly measure the current, we have to get it through other means. Okay, so as soon as we get that, that is going to be very, very important. All right, now. Current is the same at any point in the circuit. That's why we say current is the current is the current in a series circuit. And what you've learned in your first electrical electronic courses, this holds true in this. Even if it was a purely resistive, there's an inductor and a resistor, just an inductor. Anything that is in series, the current is going to be the same. Kirchhoff's voltage law still applies. Okay. Total impedance is the sum of all the resistive and reactive values. Okay. Now. There's a difference, though, for those last two statements, okay, the Kirchhoff's voltage law and the um, total impedance, okay? How we sum it up is a little bit different, all right? The only difference is that in a resist, is with a resistive circuit, we simply do it algebraically, okay? But when we have a reactive component in there, we have to do it geometrically, just like we did on the RC series circuits. Okay, what that means is that we are going to have to apply Pythagorean's theorem to get our voltage total, our power total, and our voltage totals, or, and our impedance, okay, our total resistance, if you will, okay, and we're going to walk you through all of that, okay, so Impedance in a purely resistive circuit and an inductive circuit can be added algebraically, okay? As you guys know and remember, this is what it looks like right here, okay? Let me go ahead and pull this up, all right? So no matter how many we have, we could have an R3, R4, we would add them up. 
if it's just a purely inductive, we would have a um, we would have the x of l's once we've calculated those out, the formulas we've already talked about, then those would go ahead and just keep adding up no matter how many we have. But, okay, when we are dealing with a circuit that has a resistor and an inductor, okay, we are going to use Pythagorean's theorem to calculate it out, all right? So, um, the formula for that is the square root of x of l squared plus r squared, okay? And so, again, as you can imagine, here we go. Let me pull up that whiteboard again really quick. We are going to write this formula down. This is our next really important formula here. So, z equals the square root of x of l squared plus r squared, okay? All right, so again, write that down in your own handwriting to where it actually looks good, not like chicken scratch that I'm doing. Maybe I should have been a doctor with handwriting like this. So um, let's go ahead and uh, we will, uh, oops, we will take, let's look at, let's look at these, okay? So here we go. Here's a purely resistive circuit. Here's a purely inductive circuit, okay? And here is a resistive inductive circuit in here where they're all working, they're working together to use Pythagorean's theorem, not only for the voltage total, which we'll get to in a little bit for sure, but the inductive total, which we've just written down here, okay? So this is a comparison of those three circuits, all right? Now, the phase angle here, okay, uh, as you guys know, this typically refers to uh, the angle between the total voltage and the total current, okay? So this is the angle that we've been seeing here before, all right? And I think you guys remember how we draw this up. Again, this is going to be a little bit different though, okay? All right, we're going to be in the vector, so my phase angle here is going to be positive, all right? So if this was it, this would be, a, oops, a positive 45 degrees. That is even worse than the iPad. All right, so um, since current is in phase with the resistor voltage, the phase angle is always drawn between the uh, total voltage and the resistive voltage. So this is where my resistor would be, okay? Uh, when we're calculating those, this out, and the resistance voltage right here, okay? So my phase angle is between this spot right here because on my resistive line, okay, um, this is on my uh, horizontal line, this is where my uh, voltage and resistor are in phase, okay? Since the voltage of the resistor, uh, since the angle of the resistance voltage and the current is considered to be zero, the angle found via uh, the trig is the phase angle, all right? And now over here, as you can guess, this would be X of L and R. Oops, nope. Scratch that. VL. Ah! Sorry about that, okay? So as you guys remember, the phase angle symbol is right here, okay? So when adding an inductive reactance and resistance, they need to be added ge ge uh, geometrically. This is due to the 90 degree phase difference between X of L and R, okay? The impedance of this can be found with the formula that we already have written down, okay? So the square root of X of L squared plus R squared, okay? And now for our next formula, the first way we can find, and the quickest way we can typically use to find the phase angle when we're doing this on paper, not necessarily in lab, but as we do this on paper is going to be this right here. So let's go ahead and we will write this one down now, okay? Let's go ahead and come back over to our whiteboard here, all right? And we're gonna write down this calculation. So my phase angle here is going to be my inverse tangent, all right, 
my x of l over my r. Okay, my x of l over my r, uh, the inverse tangent of that. Okay, and this is going to be the first way that we can calculate out our phase angle. So you can look at my chicken scratch over here. Okay, or you can just copy it in your own handwriting right from the PowerPoint. Okay, so again, we're building out this formula sheet for our RL series circuits. Okay, this will be crucial when we go to do our last problem. Okay, and uh, when we're doing our labs, we're going to really need these. Okay. So, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Let's go ahead and use these formulas, okay, to calculate some things out. So, um, our first one is we want to solve this formula right here, okay? So, we have, um, move this out of the way. We have, uh, the first thing we need to do is solve for x of L right here. Okay, and to solve for x of l, we're going to use the formula 2 pi fl, as we know. So let's go ahead and type this into our calculators. Please do this with me. Please do it with me, okay? 2 times pi times 60, which is our frequency, okay, times, this is 33 millihenries, okay? So that would be point three three and this is going to equal 124 let's see if we got it right yeah we nailed it great job because i know you're doing this at home as well all right now for the next part to, and you guys have done this very similar formulas before so um depending on your calculator will determine how you need to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my parentheses. I'm going to put 124, which is my X of L. I'm going to square that. I'm going to add 75, square that. I'm going to hit the equals key, close out my parentheses. Then I'm going to take the square root of this and I get 144.9. Okay, you could round that up to 145. Let's see what they did here. Okay, yes, they went ahead and they rounded it up to 145. All right, which is great. Okay, and this is how we will solve for Z, our impedance. This is one of the main ways we can do that. There is another way we can do it as well, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. But this is, especially when you're dealing with a circuit that is on paper right there, this is probably the best way to do it, okay? So, now, bring this back up. So, now let's go ahead and solve for our phase angle, okay? Let's go ahead and solve for our phase angle. Again, whichever calculator you have, this it will be a little bit different, okay? So... In this one, what we have, we've already calculated out what our impedance is, so we're good there. We can remember which one, uh, what our X of L was, was 124. And so this is the same circuit here. And we can now go ahead, we'll clear this out. We're going to take our X of L, which is 124, divide this by 75, hit the equals key, and then do your inverse tangent. Okay, your inverse tangent, and I'm coming up with about 59 degrees. Okay, 59 degrees. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like if that's right. There, they didn't even they didn't round, which is great. So they did 58.8. Okay, so what does that mean if I were to draw this up? Okay, let's see. So here is my x of l here is my r okay so my resistance here is 75 okay let's say i let's draw this out to 150 okay so this would be right at that uh right in the middle 
Okay, 124 is going to be, if this was 150 as well, it would be a little bit higher up to here. So I will come out here and draw that connecting dot. This right here would be my Z. And my phase angle would be, oh boy, that is really bad. Um, my phase angle would be, try this, it would be 58.8 degrees. Okay, that would be my phase angle there. Okay, sorry if I keep switching up the technology. I just want to make it as interesting as possible. Okay, so this is how we go ahead and do this. And I think this is a, this is a, you know, this is the first step when we start to solve these things on paper. Okay, so now calculating the total current. Okay, so the procedure for solving the total current is this. First, you have to solve for your X of L. Okay. We've already done that. Okay. And then we need to solve for our Z, which we've already done, which came out to be 145 ohms. Okay. Now let's go ahead and use Ohm's law to solve this if it was a um, for IT. Okay. So let's go ahead. We are going to write down our latest um, our latest formula here, okay? And we're gonna add another one to it as well, one that's not on the PowerPoint. So IT is calculated by, I'm gonna, they say E, I'm gonna use voltage total over Z, okay? And now this is an Ohm's Law Circle question Okay, an example. So this is gives us another hint, all right, of something we can do, which we will do here in one quick second. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull this up. Let's go ahead and solve for I for uh, our current total. So if I take 120 volts divided by my Z, which was 145, I would get about 0.83 amps. Okay. All right, about 0.83 amps. So now using that, another way that we can calculate out Z now is my voltage total over my current total. All right, this is gonna be very important because we're gonna be using this in, this is one of the ways we can get current total using our, in our labs, okay? So again, we can prove this pretty easily. We'll take 120 volts divided by our current total, which we said was 0.83. And look at that. That rounds up really close if I were to round that up to 145. All right, which go ahead, which proves um, this right here, which proves this formula right here. And so that's another formula we want in our back pocket. Okay, and so as you could also guess, we can calculate out our voltage total by taking our Z times our IT. Okay, all right, and so that's another formula we should we, we can have written down whether we'll use that one or not, maybe just for verifying, but um, that's another way we can do that. All right, so this is how we can get our X of L, our Z, our circuit phase angle in an RL series circuit, and how we get our current total. Okay, these are all different ways to do that. Okay, and in the next video, we are going to walk through how to calculate out our voltage total, or our voltage drops across the individual circuits. Okay, all right, thank you.